Welcome back everyone. Thank you for visiting the YouTube channel for bestbiblecommentaries.com. In this video, I'm going to talk about the New Testament commentaries written by Scottish minister and theologian William Barclay. This is a very popular commentary series, yet controversial for some conservatives, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Before I get into all of it, I invite you to subscribe to my channel if you're interested in seeing videos on Biblical Studies resources. I'd appreciate it if you would consider clicking the thumbs up button on my videos, as that really just uh, helps me, it helps me help more people. Um, and also feel free to leave a comment or ask a question down below. So William Barclay, if you're not familiar with him, was a minister in the Church of Scotland. He lived from 1907 to 1978. So he's passed away now for a few decades. He was a professor of divinity at the University of Glasgow, and he is most well known for his, his Bible teaching in general, but as far as his uh, written books, his written ministry is concerned, he's most known for the Daily Study Bible Commentary series, and that's what this series is here. The Daily Study Bible series. I'll talk about this one in just a moment. This is the uh, new Daily Study Bible series. Um, and I don't know about you, but this series um, in this cover edition, actually, is something that I find all the time at used bookstores. When I look in the Bible section or I look in the Bible commentary section in used bookstores around the area where I live, I almost always see these volumes and they're usually like three or four dollars a piece. And that's exactly how much these ones were uh, when I got them at a used bookstore. So um, I don't know if that's true. Let me know if that's true for you in the bookstores around you. Uh, but that's definitely true in the area uh, where I live. So the um, in the Daily Study Bible series, so this is an introductory commentary series. And there are, I think, 17 uh, New Testament volumes altogether, if I remember correctly. Um, so, and some of the books are covered in two volumes. So this is uh, John, the Gospel of John, Volume 1, and then there's a Volume 2. Um, I think Matthew's in two volumes, and a few other New Testament books are in two volumes. So this is an introductory series, and so anybody would be able to follow it. People use these for devotional literature. Pastors use them for sermon preparations. But um, anybody... Any, even if you're new to biblical studies resources, you will be able to pick up these volumes and understand everything that's being communicated. So one, one of the things that William Barclay wanted to do with this series is um, make scripture accessible uh, or understandable to, to even um, new Christians or pe just people do, who didn't have a lot of information about the Bible. It's, it's what Howard Hendricks, I always think of the Howard Hendricks phrase of putting the goods on the lower shelf. So one of the things that Howard Hendricks talks about in, I think it's book Teaching the Bible, if I remember correctly, is taking um, the subject matter of scripture and don't put it on the high shelf where not many people can reach it and really grasp it and take hold of it. As a teacher or preacher, we want to put the information on the lower shelf so more people will be able to access it and, and understand it. And, um, and that's what I would say William Barclay does in this commentary series is he's putting the content of the Bible on the lower shelf. And, and that's, that's really what introductory commentaries uh, do. So um, like I said, I think there's 17 volumes altogether in this New Testament series. So if you're looking to put together an entire series, you might be able to do this one pretty pretty. Um, you know, inexpensively because use volumes, you can usually find them for a couple of dollars and there's only 17 in the set. Uh, I think there's 17 in the set, but there might be some topics. I'm, I'm just trying to remember off the top of my head. He might like have one like on the Sermon on the Mount or something like that. And I'm not just, I just can't remember if that's included in the 17 or not. He does use his own translation of the New Testament. So some people don't, don't um, like that. It's not very common for introductory commentaries for the author to use their own translation. It's more common for technical commentaries and mid-level commentaries, but um, you know, you can always read a the translation you prefer alongside of alongside of um, these volumes. Old Testament volumes in this series are endorsed by William Barclay, but they are not written by him. So um, there are some evangelical authors uh, in New Test writing New Testament volumes. I can't remember names off the top of my head, but um, they're pretty well reviewed, but not 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 as beloved as uh, William Barclay's New Testament commentaries. So um, let me just show you now the uh, the New Daily Study Bible. Um, you see the New Daily Study Bible here, 
And <laughs> so kind of a funny story. Uh, when I ordered these two copies um, to to show you all, um, I accidentally ordered the printed or the large print edition. <laughs> so that's why they're so giant. Um, I don't know if they're commonly if they're this size or not. I'm not sure. I just I picked the wrong um, resource on accident. So I'm showing you the the, the giant edition. Uh, so the text is pretty big. <laughs> it's probably like 18 point font or something. Uh, so pretty large. That also explains why I also was like, wow, these are like $30 a piece. Um, but then it explains why they're larger and so they'll cost more. So that makes sense. All right. So anyway, what is the new daily study Bible series? So first of all, um, this is the, the majority of the content is all William Barclay's material from the Daily Study Bible series, but there are some um, edits and additions um, that were overseen by Ronnie Barclay, who is William Barclay's son. So, um, so some of the the content is like um, there's added illustrations. Uh, one of the things that Barclay is known for is his illustrations. Um, so there's. Uh, new illustrations. There's some editing of some old illustrations just for the sake of clarity, I think. Um, and there's just some updated language uh, for just the 21st century. So, but the, the bulk of the content is, is the same. All right, let me give you a couple of reviews and then I'll talk in about a little bit about um, some of the theology that's controversial amongst conservatives. Um, the first review from John Evans says that uh, many pastors have used this daily study Bible series to add sparkle to their sermons, but it has something of a bad reputation among conservatives because of its decidedly liberal, critical interpretation of the Gospels. So William Barclay, one of the reasons why this series is very well reviewed is because of just the way he describes scripture. He um, the way he just, he explains scripture is very memorable. He puts it in simple terms that are easy to remember. And he has what, I don't know how you would exactly describe it, kind of like a flowery, um, uh, aspect to his descriptions, I guess. He's very quotable. Uh, pastors who use him for their sermon preparation, um, will often, like he's quotable. Not all commentaries are quotable from the pulpit. Uh, but Barclay is quotable. That's that's how memorable his writing is. So that's why Evan says that pastors use him to add sparkle to their sermons. But it has something of a bad reputation among conservatives because of the liberal critical interpretations. So more on that in just a second. D.A. Carson in his commentary review of the Daily Study Bible series says that Barclay is eminently quotable. So that's, again, that's what I was referring to before. Um, Carson says, Barclay is eminently quotable and could not be dull if he tried. <laughs> I, I love that. That's that's typical D.A. Carson um, description. Uh, it's just wonderful. Barclay is eminently quotable and could not be dull if he tried. <laughs> um, and then he says that um, in Barclay's interpretation, uh, especially in the Gospels, um, that miracles tend to be lessons, not events. So miracles, and that relates to the virgin birth, um, the resurrection, um, and so the other miracles of Jesus tend to be lessons, not events. And so from a conservative perspective, you can see how we're going to get into some uh, controversial um, issues now. So, so what are some of the controversial the stances. Uh, one is that William Barclay is a universalist. So um, he says, quote, I am a convinced universalist. I believe that in the end, all men will be gathered into the love of God. So the subject of universalism has become um, a an issue that evangelicals have been discussing and really debating for the last decade. I mean, there's universalists before that, but the, but the doctrine seems to be gaining a little bit of traction, or maybe it's just that some famous people, <laughs> um, uh, have advocated for the universalist position recently. And so in that way, it's gained traction, at least attention. Um, I don't know if there's a movement or anything, but maybe some, the doctrine has some increased attention. So, um, so that would be controversial among, uh, many conservatives. Another one is evolution. 
Um, Barclay has some interesting ideas on evolution and Darwinian evolution. He believes that Jesus is the, the climax of the evolutionary process. So I suppose you would call that theistic evolution. I'm not quite sure if he would use that term or not. Um, that might be a little bit more modern than, than the time area that he was, um, mostly writing in. Uh, he also says that, so Jesus is the climax of the evolutionary process, but he says that the Bible never makes Jesus a second God, but stresses Jesus' dependence upon God. So again, these are introductory commentaries. And so, you know, it, we don't have a fully developed doctrine of the Trinity found in these volumes. And so, um, you might be like me where you're like, uh, can you elaborate a little bit more? I'm not quite sure. Um, what you're saying, but, uh, anyway, um, another one, the inspiration of scripture. Uh, so other doctrines like the inspiration of scripture, I already said the virgin birth, um, Jesus miracles recorded in the gospels, Berkeley. I, I guess you would say he doubts all of those things. Um, he doesn't necessarily write in opposition to them. Um, I, there was a bi biographer, I think it was that was interviewing Barclay on these issues. And I, th I think the word the biographer uses that Barclay doubted these things. So I'm not sure if that word doubted is Barclay's or somebody assigning that to Barclay, but it's definitely fair to say that he questioned these doctrines and maybe more as in just outright disbelieved them. So I'm just not sure what, what description to attach to it. Uh, and then also the atonement and, uh, Barclay was critical of substitutionary atonement. And so, um, conservatives would probably take issue with that. So, um, yeah, so that's the daily study Bible series by, uh, William Barclay. Feel free to leave comments, ask questions, uh, down below and, um, thanks for visiting and I'll see you next time.